on this week of as the bird turns. So I want to. Oh, so these are right here. I wanted to show. Um, I've been trying to get around to this. There's been so many hundred thousand different things to. Um, so after I dry them off, you know, like they're they're kind of starting to get dry. So you want to, um, you know, once they, especially on birds, once they start getting dry, it it really uh, it's hard for them to rehydrate up to the same level. So um, what I do is after I'll dry them. That's normally if I eat lunch or something. Um, I'll put in some wet paper towels into into the head, and then a nice straight sheet into here. You know, make sure everything is nice. Dang it, it's changing channels on me. So I'll make sure everything is like turned and placed down because you don't want um, you know, you don't want the feathers to be curled up under there and getting you know any kind of you know grease or or water or whatever getting wet after they're already dry. So. I'll get everything kind of nice and straight, set it there, let that kind of rehydrate itself, and then I can put them together. So this one has a broken wing. I'm going to try to do the the wiring, um, actually two broken wings. So if you have one, you want to start at the one that's the either not broken or the least broken. So you can have a better baseline on distances and, you know, the angles of everything. So anyway, I wanted to show, show this. So I just get a pair of... Um, pair of tweezers on the end and then I just kind of you know I stuff it down in there same thing make sure nothing's folded in on itself make sure everything is nice and kind of you know, laid out especially the eye area so anyway to the point so this is just a uh, strap mount so using 16 gauge for this kind of bigger bird I always want to go to to here and wedge it in to the very last joint and then that way I can bend, uh, I can bend this and keep it in place. Because I know in the past, like some that'll go just to the very end, and then this is kind of floppy. But I don't even see how that's really a, uh, I don't know, a productive thing. Um, it's so much easier and much more manageable to do it all the way out and get a nice bend. So, like I said, it's broke, um, but for the sake of the point anyway. So I just go through, kind of get it inverted, kind of get it started, and then I just kind of want to work it up and down so it doesn't uh, obviously go through the skin if possible. So I kind of fill with my thumb, get it right in between the, the skin there, and then you can actually feel it go in between those last two bones. And then I just kind of push until it's solid, no biggie. And then... Always lock it underneath this last little joint. Get this first one. Get this first tie down here. Then bend it up. Kind of get it not 90, but not too far out because 90 would be way too high. Just I don't even know what angle that would be. Maybe 70 something. So then on this one, since there's a break, either way, start at the bottom kind of go up and I just know from experience it's going to be about here so I'll kind of go like I said if it wasn't broken then what I would do I'm just trying to give a good example of the different scenarios um, if it wasn't broken I'd wrap this one up always make sure the end is nice and sharp so it goes into the body um, then what I would do I would go to the, I would go to the broken one and you know normally if they're broken here broken there and then I would just put them side by side to compare do the bend and then just tape up the same amount that way you know they're the same distance so then I'll just kind of do some borax out into the wing because that area is often uh, a little bit more moist when you're drying it but then like I said from here little bend little bend and then obviously it's going to be uh, hanging so I'll have to do a little bit of work you know, on that, but just nice and solid. So same thing on the, on the next wing. Um, so I'll go ahead and do the leg. So leg is same thing. Uh, still borax. I just dry these things off. So get it out. If it's broken, you know, and, and I guess if, if you really wanted to, on some of them, if you see it's broken, you could always measure. Um, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll break when you cut. You could always measure... Um, I guess after you're skinning them or whatever, if you wanted to get a, uh, you know, actual measurement. 
but normally on the legs it's pretty forgiving so I put it in there like I said the biggest thing that will happen is you'll come out here which really affects it when you go to inject it um, I may try to do that today a video of injecting but anyway I just, just kind of feel it work it through and then I'll go so you can kind of you can see the wire obviously I don't want it to come out I want it to stay there invert it back through and so then I just repeat this process on all four and uh, I like using electrical tape because it's nice and strong cheap and easy and holds up well over time and uh, and then I'll normally cut maybe six inches enough so obviously it can go all the way through the body and enough to curl it back around so then from there get a bin another good little tip is like on the legs especially once you get one that's in there and it's bent this one's not broken but if it were then what I would do is I would put the wire in and uh, I'll do it I know it's not broken but then I would just get the the joint right there and line them up so if this one was broken say here then I could just say okay I need to tape it up to this point same thing on the wings it's like if one's broken once you get them side by side you can see exactly how long um, you need to tape up to or mark it or whatever you do um, and then from here I'm just gonna do the other side I mean there's no point of showing it because it's gonna be the exact same thing um, and then uh, and then I'll wire them up so I may I don't know maybe I'll do a separate one of, of uh, putting the wires in but I'm trying to keep them a little bit short there's been an issue with uh, stuff that goes over like 15 minutes so I'm trying to keep them a little bit more brief um, but anyway that's a wire so it's on a standing bird then on that in that particular case I'd be using this is 12 on one-legged bird on this size I would use a 10 gauge um, if it was a two-legged standing I'd use uh, two 12s and then same process there the only difference is is then I would run it straight out the ball make sure I have plenty of room and then it's the same exact process and of course I wouldn't wire the wings on a standing bird um, if it's a one-legged bird I would do uh, one-legged standing bird so I do a lot of wing kicks and stuff like that I would do the standing leg would be 10 gauge the other leg that would be kind of kind of curled up a little bit that would just be like 16 18 something like that um, 18 is good it's thin and to work with but it's just real jiggly um, even as it dries and so I kind of like it to where stuff can least it could be bumped or if somebody you know I don't know just just so stuff doesn't break kind of like I did the example of holding that bird up um, by its bill it's like you know if somebody a kid little kid bumps into it a dog whatever hopefully not a dog because they end up chewing stuff but you know if it gets bumped into or something dropped or just you know whatever the the casualties of life um, it shouldn't break yeah maybe it ruffles up something that could be you know easily fixed um, so I like to at least do 16 um, and like I said on this I'll use 16 for the strap birds if it was something smaller say like a um, a quail or a teal um, then I would probably go 18 just so I could really fold it up um, so on a regular flying bird so say this wasn't a strap this was like a normal flying I would do um, 14 gauge 14 gauge and 16 gauge on the legs uh, 14 gauge just kind of keeps it nice and thick since this is a strap and everything is real compressed or they're real laid against the body um, you don't need it as thick um, you need a little bit more movement to kind of get the contours the right shapes and angles um, so I just kind of want to go through everything here on the wiring process just like what sizes I use um, I'll try to maybe put it in the, in the description on kind of some of the different gauges or whatever so you know like on a strap it doesn't matter as much because it's hanging down so there's no real need but again I'm on a regular flying bird I'm gonna use uh, 12 gauge for the neck that's what I did with this one um, just to give it some strength this is gonna be you know this is gonna be just kinda of hanging down I've already done a video on how I prep how I do the neck the junction um, you know the hole in the back glue I mean I've, I've done all that so we're kinda of leading up to uh, kinda of the finished product of all this stuff so anyway so that's uh, that's it for the wiring um, like I said if it was Standing bird, I wouldn't do the wings. 
on something a strap that's not going to have any gravity pulling on it I'll, I'll go a little thinner so i have a little bit more mobility um and like i said for a teal if it was a regular flying teal something small then i would probably go you know 16 for the wings 16 for the legs that's going to be kind of stiff but you can go 16 18 um you know like i said there was a time when i used to use 12 for the wings on birds of size but that is so thick and what normally ends up happening is you get it out here and once you really start to kind of bend and try to actually position the wing it almost always will poke out and then you have a whole different problem and then it's like okay now i gotta sit there and try to you know keep poking this thing in then you got to rip in the skin it's just it i don't know it's not worth it and the string strength difference really isn't anything um that's going to pay off so anyway that's the wiring i'll try to do um i'm gonna get get that all finished out and then um i'll do a separate one of actually wiring it up and probably sewing it so anyway till then